And boom, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, none other than yours truly, Chef Scott, coming to you live and uncensored. Hey, I'm so glad to be with the Phoenix Fitness International family. Look, I am excited to be with you all today. Big special shout outs to Master Coach Shalita Gray. Coach Lita, hey, listen, we're going to be having a wonderful time today. I'm so glad if all of you get a chance to tune in to um, uh, Chef Scott doing a little uh, cooking demonstration today. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the actual uh, techniques in cooking, but also make a real quick, uh, fantastic meal that you'll be able to enjoy, you'll be able to make real quick by yourself. Hey, Sandy, good to see you. So it's going to be real fun. Uh, let me just talk about what we're doing right now. You're on day two of your actual detox. And I know how it is because I've been on detox, several detox, hundreds of detox, a lot of detox. And hey, this may be your first. So day two, uh, you you got a lot of excitement still going. You should have a lot of excitement still going. But you're kind of feeling like, okay, uh, let me just push through it, push through it. It's not that bad. Day two is pretty usually a pretty good day. Day three, that's where it gets interesting. So like I told you all, when you go and you're entering into this actual uh, detox, make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water because, again, our body tends to start cramping, and then next thing you know, you're starting to have little headaches and things like that. Listen, that water will help chase that uh, cramping and also help chase those headaches away. So definitely you want to take full advantage of it. Drink as much water as you can. There's no other substitute. Now, we do know that because this is day two, you're still into doing all vegetables, all fruits. Remember, we're staying away from pineapples. We're staying away from bananas. When it comes down to vegetables, we're staying away from corn. We're staying away from things like potatoes. We're staying away from things like pasta and rice. And that's why this meal today uh, that Chef Scott's going to be making with you is going to be a really great meal. Uh, it'll be, you'll see, it'll be a stir fry. But Chef Scott's going to only use green vegetables and also white vegetables. So we're going to be using uh, green vegetables and white vegetables, mainly, like I said, onions and cauliflower rice. So you'll get a chance to see how I deal with that. And also how I put into it an added thing of broccoli and split peas. But it's going to be a great meal. So, hey, Bonnie, good to see you. Uh, so those are always, always things to be uh, very mindful of. Next thing I want you to be mindful of is continually trusting the process. You don't have to think this out. We've got some of the best coaches out that are actually dealing with you all right now. And believe it or not, you're going to find yourself uh, being very successful because they're each one of these coaches, not only are they going through the actual detox with you, but they've gone through it themselves several times. Some of them have lost 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 pounds. So believe it or not, you've got some of the best coaches out that are working with you. Take full advantage of it. If you're having any questions, ask them. I've, I've found out in the years that I've been doing this, the only silly question or the only crazy question is the one you don't ask. Hey, Betty, good to see you. So again, ask them if you're having any type of uh, uh, questions. And just like I said, just things that you're inquisitive about, they'll be able to tell you and explain it all to you, okay? So again, special shout out. I believe we have Coach Ann. We also have Coach Lashonda and Coach B. Rich, all right? I think you might have a new one too, but I don't want to go in there and say it. I want to go in there and say it because I want to make sure. All right, so, hey, by all means, uh, let's get ready to get into our meal. The meal that we're going to be making today is going to be a real easy meal. It should take no more than, actually, it'll take less than about 10 minutes. I'm going to show you, first of all, a little bit of cutting techniques because it's very important that you understand when you're actually cutting your actual uh, foods, you don't want to cut off any fingers. We don't want that. How many times have you cut and all of a sudden, you get, no, oh, and you cut your finger. So I'm going to show you a way so you'll never have to worry about cutting your fingers again. Also, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the difference between slicing and dicing. Okay, that's also very important to be able to know when you're actually dealing with foods and you're actually cutting up foods. You need to know that. I'm going to show you, first of all, right now, I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade salt-free seasoning. Yes, your own. How about that? Now, that's going to be really good because I'm going to tell you like this. Um, I have nothing against Miss Dash and some of the others because they're great, you know, but I'll tell you what, you can save a whole lot of money if you do it on your own. Uh, uh. Okay, so you ready to go over to the laboratory and let Chef Scott talk a little bit? Let's go. All right. Come on with me. Here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to turn this cami camera around. 
And let's go down here where it's all, this is where it all goes down. This is the laboratory, yep. Chef Scott been doing this long time, over 30, what, 35, 37 years? Woo, Lord, that means that I must be young. Ha, <laughs> y'all thought I was gonna tell my age, huh? Uh-huh, sure to see, shame on y'all. All right, so we're about here. This is a good, good level to be able to have everybody at. Okay, and that's just so you can see real good. I'm gonna zoomy zoom a little bit. Now, what I'm gonna do while I'm showing you this demonstration, if you'll look right over here, that's the stovey stove. I have what it's called a cast iron uh, pan here. Now, as I always tell people, when you're dealing with a cast iron pan, make sure that you keep oil in your actual pan. No, you don't have to have it layered up high, but if you wanna keep it to have this consistency and have it as a good pan that you can use for years, because believe it or not, cast iron pan, is this is a lifelong pan. You don't break this, you don't break it, you don't mess it up. Only way you can damage this is by letting rust accumulate, and that's because you don't have oil in your actual pan layer. That's where they say the flavor is, the flavor. So while I'm gonna be explaining these other things, I'm gonna be turning my actual stove on just so I'll save a little bit of time. Uh, for me, today's meal is gonna be like on the medium. Medium for me is like number five, but I have a little bit medium low because I'll have it like on four. You'll see this start to heat up. And again, uh, and whenever you're dealing with um, foods that you're gonna be cooking, like I said, on the stove with a pan, you don't wanna have it heat up too quick. So it's not good to turn it all the way up on high unless you got a real good pan that you know you're not going to burn. And this is one of those ones. But today's meal will only have to take like about a medium for me to cook it. And I'll show you exactly what I do. So let me come over here and talk a little bit. I'll get the camera right around here. There we go. And going to come in a little bit more. Yeah. All right. So first thing I'm going to talk about is how to make your own personal seasoning. And I think it's vitally important to have your own because again uh you'll spend a lot of money on these other seasonings as you notice this season right here doesn't have any name anything why because it's chef scott's own seasoning and you just listen uh this will save you so much money and again this is a salt free seasoning so if you don't get a chance if you don't have a pen right now you can come back and look at this video over and over and over chef scott won't mind Hey, so let me tell you what I have in this so you'll get a chance to learn how to go about making your own. And again, this will be a salt free seasoning. Number one thing I have in here is lemon. It is a lemon zest. Lemon zest is actually a part of the lemon that's the skin and the zest is the back part of it. You can get lemon zest on your local uh, markets. You can have the lemon zest though. You'll be able to buy it. Put your lemon zest in it. Next thing you have, I have in here uh, what's called um, garlic powder. I have garlic powder. And all these you'll have like about the same measurement. Uh, the lemon zest will be half. So if you put in a, a actual tablespoon or a teaspoon of garlic powder, then for your zest, for your lemon zest, you put in half the size of that. Also, I have in here um, onion powder. So you got lemon powder. I mean, not lemon. You have lemon zest. You have garlic powder. You have onion powder. You have in here also paprika. Paprika is another one of those that you only do a half. So no matter how much of the actual garlic powder or the uh, or the uh, onion powder that you have, half of that will be paprika. You also have in here, now it's going to be uh, up to you, but again, uh, you want to have ground pepper. Ground pepper you want to use as a half also. So it's like you have, again, if you do a tablespoon of garlic powder, then you do a half a tablespoon of ground pepper because ground pepper adds on to it also. Other thing you want to be able to have in here are some of the seasonings. You want to have like oregano. Oregano is a really good seasoning. Cilantro is also a good seasoning. This is all adds into a, like an Italian type of flavor to it. These are, should be just only a, a few pinches of it. It doesn't take much. Uh, you want to have there, like I said, cilantro. You want to have oregano. Uh, you want to have like parsley. That's fine. You can use all those. Those will be a dry leaf ones that you want to be able to use. Okay. Along with that, you want to have also some uh, kind of an Indian type of flavor to it. Uh, you can put in here cumin. Cumin, you would actually use the same amount as you would use for the actual um, um, uh, garlic powder and everything like that because it gives a really good flavorable, uh, uh, not just texture, but the smell. Also, um, if you want to use turmeric, 
You can use turmeric, which will be the same amount as you would use for the cumin. And if you want to, um, you can, like I said, you can actually blend all these together. And as you blend them together, the other thing I want to tell you is uh, make sure that you shake it really well when you're putting them the, the, all together. So if you're using, like I said, cumin or you're using turmeric uh, or any of these other type of spices, make sure that you're blending it really, really well because that'll give that actual um, that consistency that you would look for and something like this. If you want to have it a little bit hot, you can always add a little bit of red crushed pepper. I would say it only a few pinches. When I say pinches, you understand what I mean? Because that this, these type of peppers, uh, they're very hot. And you don't want that whole thing to get on fire, then you can't even taste the rest of it. If you want to add a little cayenne, another thing, just a little bit, a little pinch of it. Because uh, like I mentioned, this, these uh, peppers, when they get hot, they get hot for real. Okay? All right. So, again, y'all see it? All right. So that is how to, how to go about making your own actual, um, like I said, your own seasoning that is salt free, that'll be very tasty, but cost worthy, and it'll be healthy. Okay, uh, let me just go ahead and say this. So because you do know that some of you will be uh, making and having other seasons uh, at later time, it's just this week during the detox, we're not using any salt. If you do use salt, make sure you're using sea salt, sea salt. Not this week now, again, during the detox, no sea salt. You'll see some of the recipes that I have coming up. They'll be having sea salt into it. Sea salt comes from two different areas. It comes from the actual Mediterranean Sea or from the Himalayan mountains. Uh, sea salt is very good for the body. It has high compacted uh, when it comes down to uh, minerals. It has over 82 minerals. The actual table salt or the iodine salt, which is the regular table salt that you use, that uh, is actually man-made, and they cook it at such high temperatures, it cooks a lot of all the min minerals out of it. So there's only four minerals in that actual table salt. So if you look at the difference, four minerals versus 82, I think sea salt is what you should use, <laughs> and it's a lot healthier. Just have to be very sparingly because sea salt, it, it has a tendency to, uh, it may look like it's a uh, little crystalled, but those uh, flavors really expand really big, okay? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we're going to be cooking with today. I have here for an onion. Onion I'm going to be using uh, to show you as a little bit of cutting technique. Um, I'll be using today, you see these uh, split peas and a little bit of lemon for that little extra zest. Um, I have also here a bunch of corsets and also uh, broccoli. We're going to be using uh, broccoli. And then I have this wonderful, if you see this here, this is called cauliflower broccoli rice. What do you mean cauliflower broccoli rice? Now you can buy bags which has the broccoli and the cauliflower diced up into like a rice type shape. And you can buy it all together. Go to your Dollar General, believe it or not, or they have different stores like that. You can buy a whole pack, uh, package of this, maybe about 10, 12 ounces for $1. Can't beat it. Again, it's really good. So that's the cauliflower rice that we'll be using. And like I told you, I'll be using the lemon for a little bit of more seasoning. And then I told you I'm going to be uh, cutting these onion up. So let me go ahead and show you a little bit about cutting this onion. Onions are tricky. Even though, and I, I got this whole onion. Does it make a difference if you clean the onion on the outside like this? No, it doesn't. Why? Because we're going to cut it all off. That's why. <laughs> but again, if you want to rinse it off, you can rinse it off so none of that dirt and debris gets onto your actual cutting board. That's what I did. I already rinsed off and everything like that. But let me just show you exactly how to go about cutting the onion because it's very vital, very in, in, informative. And again, if you don't know the difference between slicing and dicing, I'll show you a little bit today. And also, I'll let you know, anytime you're doing a stir-fry, stir-fry, which is what we're doing today, we'll always have slices. So I'm going to bake this into slices. Uh, when I talk about dicing, that's real small little cubes. That's how these are. These are like real, real small little cubes, but there's more dicing. Okay, first thing I want to do with the onion. For me, I generally will cut off this side right here. So I uh, want to teach you what I, I call the claw. See there? Claw. Y'all see it on both sides? Claw. If you don't learn this technique, you're going to be in trouble, trouble, trouble. So, again, you want to be able to use the, uh, the claw. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Melissa. Again, these are uh, a little bit of technique. You want to use that because if you'll hold your hand in that type of fashion, you'll be able to hold your onion or whatever vegetable that is. And you see, I have a knife. always have a sharp and a clean knife. When I can do my cuts and everything like that, I don't have to worry about cutting my fingers because these are all bent. Those are bent, and look what my thumb's doing. Those are bent. Look at my thumb's doing. My thumb is holding it together so it doesn't get out of whack. 
okay and it doesn't slide so initially I'm going to use this cutting off the actual stock on the end one end first boom now this is chef Scott's technique everybody doesn't do it this way this is just what chef Scott does cut off that end right there I'm going to discard this it means to throw it in the trash all right that's thrown in the trash out of the way okay now going to the opposite side same thing cutting right down from the opposite side I'm hoping I'm not blocking this camera yeah so just so you can see it cutting straight on down and anytime you're doing vegetables and especially vegetables that have kind of odd shapes like this like the onion does this is not a round type thing it's always good to cut off those ends first because if you cut off those ends you see it won't be moving around and then if it's moving around you mess around and cut your finger because it's all moving around so always cut off the the end stocks so that you'll actually get a chance to have a flat surface to be able to cut with now chef scott does this little technique this is just chef scott you know onions are in layers so you got all these different layers that you'll see in the onion well chef scott's gonna take his knife and just run it right down here on one layer because it's one little layer so i'm going to do it right here a nice little just so i know that it's breaking the actual skin and doing it as one layer you see i just slid it right down like that so i want to go right under that one layer right there that's what chef's got now I'm one layer down and i'm just going to peel it right around because that's all i did it was make that incision that was right under that first layer and voila voila there it is <laughs> all right so let me discard and throw in the garbage the other part of that onion all right as i told you today we're going to be doing a, a stir fry so i'm going to be doing it in strips so I'm going to cut this actually in half right here. And the reason I'm going to cut it in half so that I can lay it even, because you want to always try to have your vegetables laid even when you get ready to do any cutting or anything like that. Because again, these vegetables can move. And if they move, you don't want to cut yourself. So same technique right there in the middle, going straight across. Voila. All right. I'm not going to cut up the whole onion because I'm just going to be feeding myself today. And if any of you all just happen to be in the Atlanta area, y'all should look me up. Say, hey, Chef, I'll be coming around uh, Atlanta. Uh, give me a call. And uh, my number is one wow, 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 wow. Wow. That does work. I thought it only worked for Charlie Brown. Okay. Get on your actual uh, cell phone, the Charlie Brown, mute out your number uh, conversation. Because every time I try to tell people my number, I'll say, hey, it's for the wow, 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 wow. See? It works. But anyhow, <laughs> y'all know I'm just having fun. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to be doing slicing because again, we're doing stir fry. I'll stir fry our slicing. All right, so here we go. Start to do a little bit of slicing. And just want to make sure that you all are able to see it. Had to have my fingers in place, my claw in place. And I'm just slicing, 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 slicing. I'm not going to cut the whole onion because I just remembered, as I just mentioned, I'm going to be the only one eating it. And I'm not going to eat that much onion. So I'm going to flare this actual onion op open and put it in this actual bowl right here. And you see I've already done the slicing, so I'm flaring it open. And as I'm doing it, flaring it open, there slices. There we go. Slicing, slice, 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 slices. And yippee. All right. Good stuff. All right, get ready to go over here and have fun now. Let me bring you all closer so you can get a chance to see Chef Scott doing this little technique on this on this wonderful pan because this pan is already heated and ripped to go as they say ripped to go all right we're going to bring you down here to all the actions at let's go down to the river all right here's where the actions at coming in oh yeah right there all right that's what we're talking about right there now chef's got that that's that set up right there and y'all are right there in front of don't jump in the pan I know I got y'all close, but don't jump in the pan. Here we go. I'll put my little thing right under there. I'm trying to give y'all like a panorama view real good and close. And I think I'll just put it a little bit like that. All right. Can't miss it now. Y'all got the whole thing. All right. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my uh, extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is one of the purest actual substance that we have. And... 
uh, where it comes down to oils. So I always use the extra virgin olive oil. This uh, pan is very hot now because I've been heating up after, as I started the actual program. I'm actually trying to just cover the base of the actual pan. So about two tablespoons generally will cover the base. Uh, I don't know exactly how hot my pan is, so I'm just going to go and stir it around. Yeah, that's real hot. There we go. There it is. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to, first of all, start out with uh, actual um, my cauliflower rice. As you do know, all vegetables, none of the vegetables have to be cooked, but because this is a hot meal, I'm going to be actually cooking the actual vegetable, which will make it even that much better. And uh, like I said, I'll be seasoning it also, so you'll see. So here we go with the cauliflower rice. When I put the cauliflower rice in, I'm pushing it away because this is going to be hot. And because, as you do know, cauliflower builds up and holds water. I don't want it splashing back on me, so I want you all to be able to see exactly how it goes. And yep, that's the real deal there. You're hearing it. Talk to me. Yeah, I like to hear that sound. That's when you, you know, yeah, you get that nice heat coming on. I'm going to spread it all out. And as you do know, like I said, this is going to caramelize and, uh, in other words, soften. And that's what I want to be able to do is have it in there. That's it I'm going to do. I'm going to have it in here, put in here the wonderful broccoli. Just going to stir this around so I'm getting all these oils and everything into the actual cauliflower rice and broccoli rice. Remember, like I said, sometimes you got to you gotta just get out there and find out, you know, where the places that have the best sales and everything like that. And then as you find it, by all means, utilize it. Save money. Uh, Chef doesn't always go to the big brand stores and everything, especially if these other stores have a better price for the same product. I'm not ashamed. Nope. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Now I'm going to put in the broccoli. Same type of thing, kind of low to the actual pan. So we're putting the broccoli in. Stirring that broccoli around real good. That's what we want to do. So we're still getting that heat so it's coming out. Another good thing about having the actual, um, when you're actually cooking with a cast iron uh, skillet, is that um, the heat uh, stays in the actual skillet and it just circulates around and holds that heat real good. So just going to do the onions, just cut up the sliced onions. All right, putting those onions in there. There we go. Getting that nice stirred in, stirred around real good. And as you do know, like I said, onions only take about maybe about four minutes to start to soften and everything like that. And But onions give such a, a great added uh, flavor and aroma. And then once I put in these actual um, split peas, I'll then actually get a chance to do some seasoning onto it. And here goes split peas. Same type of thing right down where all the action is at. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I decided today, like I said, normally I, when I'm doing like a stir fry, I'll have in there things like carrots and different peppers, uh, sweet peppers, bell pepper, you know, things like yellow, orange, red, uh, green pepper, things like that. But today I decided, you know what? I don't want to do all that. I got this beautiful cauliflower with, with the broccoli. I have the actual broccoli corsets. I have the onion with it. And then also they split peas, which just add a, a added labor layer of taste. And now here's some of that Chef Scott seasoning. Only going to use about a tablespoon. So I'm going to shake that all around there. About a tablespoon. There we go. That's just to get that flavor that I need. And wow, believe it or not, it's amazing how all these go together. It's like you won't get the same flavor without any of these ingredients. Uh, most of the time, people don't realize that when you're dealing with the cauliflower, cauliflower generally masks the actual um, flavor of the other vegetables and the seasoning. So it holds that and it gives it that extra boost to it. Onion has its own, you know, onion don't, on, onion don't play. Onion will have its own uh, flavor. It doesn't care what you put with it. You will taste onion in it. And then obviously the green pe uh, split peas uh, is great ta taste and, and broccoli. They all hold their own. So all these together, they work together really nice. And I love that. So now that I have this wonderful um, array of these actual vegetables together, I'm going to take, you saw I had it uh, in that actual uh, container earlier, I had my lemon. So I'm going to take this lemon and do a little squeezing of this lemon in it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 
hot <laughs> dog. I'm telling you. And that lemon is always really good because lemon helps to also clean out the palates, but it also brings out that natural flavor of those actual vegetables. Now, for me, I don't like cooking my vegetables till the vegetables get all soft and everything because if you cook your vegetables till they get real soft, some of those actual minerals, as I talked about a little bit earlier, some of those get cooked out and it gets in the pan and you don't get a chance to get a chance to taste it all. So I love to have me some crunch to it. That's why you will never, and I'll say this again in front of everybody, you'll never see Chef Scott without a big smile on his face and, and without his, his teeth looking like they're ready to bite into a good old meal. Hey, this is Coach LaShonda. Hey, Coach. Good to see you. We had a, hey, Sandy. Good to see you also. If there's anybody I miss, listen, you know I don't intentionally mean to miss anybody. Uh, but again, it's just, hey, it's just hard to read and cook at the same time. All right, so this is, like I said, this is where I really want to get to, the consistency of it. I'm actually about through cooking and everything like that. What I'm going to get ready to do right now, I'm going to get ready to do an actual plating. And as I do my plating and everything like that, I'll go ahead and post it onto your uh, board uh, just so you'll get a chance to see what it looks like after Scott does, uh, Chef Scott does his plating. I'm going to turn off my heat right now because, again, and this is what you want to always watch out for when you're cooking. If you start seeing a lot of smoke start coming in out of your uh from your pan and everything, it means that you're cooking it too high. So you always want to have it regulated just so that you're cooking it evenly and that you're getting the actual, uh, all the flavors of the actual vegetables cooked into it. And like I said, we're going to make this thing stupendous. So without any further ado, uh, hey, you all are doing a fantastic job. You got, like I said, the fantastic coaches and you got the fantastic master coach herself, Coach Lita there with you all. So listen, I am so happy to be able to spend this time with all of you and you all, like I said, you're doing a great job. This is just a meal that I wanted to just show together uh, how to go and throw together. Let's just say you're with your family and you all are hungry and you say, man, let's go home, get something to eat. You want to make something that's really good, nutritious, delicious, and the best part about it, you won't have to do the dishes. Hey, let's go. Hey, Frida, how you doing? Free. All right. So in the same token, we just want to be able to show you all how to put together a nice meal like this. I'll be posting also today on you all site a chart that uh, Chef Scott has where it'll show you how all the different colors of the vegetables, the parts of your body that it affects. So you'll know when you see these vegetables, you'll know certain parts that it'll affect and it'll actually be to your uh, benefit to know. OK, so without any further ado, as I always say, keep on eating clean because the best is yet to come. But what do do? for you. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful day. And chef's got to be posting after I do the plating. Remember when you all do your plating, make sure you have the outsides of your plates real clean. So there's nothing that's on it. Make sure you define your vegetables. I'm talking about when you do your plating so that you can actually clearly see what vegetables you have and then take a nice little picture of it. I'd love to see that. All right, then you all take care. God bless. Bye-bye.